Previously on Simon Throssell Films. About an hour and a half in and I'm still in parole. On today's episode, I embark on the Finkel Camino in Glass. A 21 mile pilgrimage from Durham to Bishop Auckland. But what exactly is a pilgrimage? And that's probably the hardest question you could ask. If you go back to medieval times, it was very much uh, a religious experience where people went to sort of expiate their sins. It's not quite that now, but it's a way of looking at life through a different pair of eyes, reviewing what you've done in your life and moving forward in a slightly different way. The voice you just heard is that of Keith Taylor, the chair of the Friends of the Finkel Camino. We'll be hearing from him again later on in the episode. Firstly, though, a quick history lesson. The route starts at the Priory in Finkel, home to St. Godric the Hermit, who was one of the first English medieval saints to go on pilgrimage to Santiago. It continues through Durham, stopping at the shrine of St. Cuthbert in the cathedral, which is visited by many pilgrims, and across the fields once walked upon by Romans, coal miners, and bishops past. The path navigates the streets of Bishop Auckland, goes parallel to the River Weir, and ends up at the Saxon church in Eskom village. You can expect some interesting, varied sights. You should find the route easy to follow. Thank you very, very much, Simon. Nice speaking with you. Good morning. Today is Thursday, the 31st of October, 2019. I'm on my way to the train station to get on a train to Durham to start the Finkel Camino. Service to Peterborough. In the distance, hidden, you can just see the outline of Durham Cathedral. Wow, that looks beautiful. Durham Cathedral was warm. It's the place where they filmed scenes from Harry Potter. It had beautiful windows, special area for pilgrims to pray. It had the tomb of the Venerable Bede. Very impressive history. Roughly mile seven. I came across the Finkel Camino in Glass after looking on the British Pilgrimage Trust website, co-created by Guy Hayward, who sounds like this. Well, a pilgrimage is, the, def the definition we use at the British Pilgrimage Trust is a journey on foot to holy places. And holy places are holistic, wholesome places that, that make you feel more, more you, as it were. And, and they can be natural and they can be built by humans. The Trust exists to advance British pilgrimage as a form of cultural heritage that promotes holistic well-being for the public benefit. The first question that most people ask but when you say, I do pilgrimage, they say, is that religious? So one of the main education aspects that we're bringing in is, is, a, is a reframing of that. So we say it's not religious and it's not not religious. And it's with or without religion, bring your own beliefs. And it was their work around the cultural revival of pilgrimages in Britain that was of most interest to me. I think in the, in the most general sense, it'll just be more acceptable and will be more understood and it won't need as much explanation as people will just go off and do it. And when the national trails were created 30 years ago, they are mainly done around nice views and, and beautiful landscape. But now there's this extra added dimension of the holy place, which is more of a kind of inward journey as well as an outward journey. I don't know about you, but Gary would. Mile nine, after mile seven, I went a bit of wayward, but I'm now back on the way. We survived. You an awful long time to get where you're going if you can't read that map. And now it is the dusk. While planning for this trip, I contacted the Roots creator David Pott for an interview, and he very kindly invited me to stay with his family at his home before the home stretch of the walk. Great. Great to meet you. All hail, pilgrim. I hope Thank you're having you. a, a buen Camino English. David is a fascinating man. In 1997, he completed a 680 mile solo pilgrimage 
and has since then been involved in setting up his own routes, particularly the Two Saints Way between Chester and Lichfield, the Finkel Camino in Gless, and he's even been commissioned to develop a further four Northern Saints trails, celebrating and raising awareness of the Christian crossroads of the British Isles, that is, the northeast of England. A little bit of Simon Reeve. Day two. The next morning back in the daylight, I walked with David to Bishop Auckland. Every step we took seemed to have an interesting historical connection to it. Whether that be the disused railway at Byers Green, the bridge over the River Gornless where a Roman urn of greyish clay filled with earth and human bones was discovered, or the Gothic deer house frequented by Bishop Richard Trevor, his guests and of course fallow deer in the mid 18th century. It was also at this point that we met Jonathan Ruffer, a philanthropist, investor, and the leader of the Auckland project. I'm just walking somebody along the Camino in Glaze. Absolutely. Oh, brilliant. I, 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 and I'm the Lord Lieutenant. Taking, he's been filming in the Camino in Glaze in Spain. Every, now he's filming every, here. Uh, so like little see. films for, to attract millennials to pilgrimage. As I said goodbye to him, as well as a big thank you to David, I visited the Auckland Tower with another personal tour guide. The Auckland project is for inclusivity everybody to be allowed in that in there. I then visited the coal mining gallery and eventually the British Trevor Gallery. I anticipate that this route's gonna to be tougher, but in fact it's a lot easier. Minor injury of the trip experienced I got a thorn stuck in my big thumb to the crack part of the trail and surrounded by some fans. 0.5 miles to go. Remember Keith Taylor from the beginning of the episode? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good, thanks, you. All the differences. This isn't this sort of thing, yeah. My train from Bishop Auckland was at 2 p.m., which meant there was enough time to continue our chat over a coffee that Keith kindly paid for. Topics ranged from the Spanish Camino and the schools that he has close links with, the cultural revival of British pilgrimages. And I do feel, because of the demand for talks, the willingness of, of, of newspapers now to put articles in, that there is a greater interest in the renewal of, of pilgrimage in England. And the Friends of the Finkel Camino Facebook page, which I highly recommend that you like. I spent the train journey reflecting on my walk. My legs were tired from the muddy and uneven terrain, but I found similarities with Santiago. The walk gave me time to cycle through my own thoughts and anxieties about jobs and living my life in London post-university. I'm very grateful to be in the position that I'm in, and spending time on your own doing a pilgrimage walk is definitely something I would now recommend to someone feeling life is tough. It's spiritual fitness for the mind, body and soul according to David's definition of a pilgrimage. For an ailment, you go to the doctors. For a mental illness, you go to counselling. For a religious concern, you go to a vicar. And for all three, you go on a pilgrimage.